You may now take your seats. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Reverend Willie Bodger II, and I am blessed to serve as the senior pastor of the historic 12th Baptist Church in the Roxbury community of Boston, the home church of our mayor, Kim Janey. At this time, I ask as we begin this swearing in ceremony that you bow and pray with me. O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We humbly give thanks for this celebratory occasion and we invoke your presence to be with us on this day. We pray now, O oh Lord, your blessing upon thy servant, Kim Janey. Bless her family and bless her administration as she stands imprinting her footsteps into the soils of history as the first African-American and woman mayor of this great city of Boston. But before she was formed in the womb, you knew her. And while prayers for almost 200 years cried out for change, you already had a plan for a fourth generation daughter of Roxbury ready for a time such as this. Lord, as we pray for her, we lift her up as she takes on the reins of this office at such a difficult juncture in our city and country's history. A time where many are grappling with grief, a time where equity gaps have been exacerbated, a time where a pandemic has brought pain to so many. But because we know God that nothing is too hard for you, we can trust that where there's hurt, there's still hope for healing. Where there are ruptures, there is still a chance to realize restoration. And where there are obstacles, there are opportunities for overcoming. So we praise you on this day. We lift you up on this historic swearing in ceremony as we bless all of the work that will come forth from this Janey administration. So in the words of our ancestors, I say this to close. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far along the way, thou who is by thy might, lead us into the light and keep us forever in the path we pray. We give you this ceremony today. In the name of the one who I call Jesus Christ, let every heart and mind say, Amen. At this time, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker is none other than our Congresswoman. a leader who stands bold for us, representing the Massachusetts 7th Congressional District in the United States House of Representatives. I introduce to you the one and only Honorable Ayanna Presley. Good afternoon. It is a great day, another history-making day in an unprecedented week in the city of Boston. Congratulations to our immediate past Mayor Martin J. Walsh. The kid from Dorchester is now our 29th United States Secretary of Labor and the first union representative to serve in the role in four decades. Mr. Secretary, I look forward to our continued partnership in Washington, D.C 
on behalf of workers and working families. This week marks not only the new heights reached by a son of Dorchester. Today, Kim Janey, a proud fourth-generation daughter of Roxbury, makes history as the first black mayor and the first woman mayor in our city. Madam Mayor. It is an honor. I first met Kim when I was a Boston City Councilor. I was the first woman of color, the first black woman elected to the Boston City Council. It is incredible to consider just how far we have come. We have borne witness to a shifting political landscape. We have seen great and historic strides made in leadership parity, in the corridors of power, and around policy and decision-making tables. Kim Janey has been a profound force in that transformation as a community member, as a leader, and as an elected official. The daughter of Clifford and Phyllis, the manifestation of the proud Janey family lineage, the struggles and the brilliance that is Roxbury. Kim Janey has made enormous contributions to Boston's paradigm shift. I first came to know Kim Janey as a fierce advocate on behalf of our children and education equity. Her presence loomed large at community meetings, in the halls of this building, in the city council chamber, where she so often came to observe and to testify. Since then, she has been elected and served as the first woman and first black woman to be the District 7 City Councilor, and I consider it a distinct honor to have served alongside her. She has earned the confidence and the trust of her constituents and her peers, culminating in her election as City Council President of the most representative council in the history of our city. And now today, as the Congresswoman for the Massachusetts 7th Congressional District, on this day, I have the distinct and humbling honor and responsibility to introduce Chief Justice Kimberly Budd to administer the oath of office to Kim Janey as the 55th mayor of the city of Boston. Now, each of these extraordinary public servants and justice seekers are trailblazers representing historic firsts. But as the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. reminds us, we are not makers of history. We are made by history. The historic ascension of Kim Janey, which we celebrate today, is not an individual achievement. It is the culmination of the ancestors' prayers, their hopes, dreams, struggles, and achievements. Some we may know by name, many more we don't, but we are the beneficiaries nonetheless of their sacrifice. I want to take a moment to uplift just some of those who put their names forward in the past to serve the city they love as mayor. Mel King. Bruce Bowling, Charles Yancey, Charlotte Golar Ritchie, and Tito Jackson, to name a few. This is a proud day for the city of Boston and all Bostonians, but I know this has a special meaning for those who dare to dream a different future for our city across the generations. Today, that seemingly improbable dream is a reality. Now, Kim Janey has always spoken truth to power. And now that she commands the coroner office and has the power, executive power, I know she will continue to confront hard truths while doing the hard work to ensure that our city actualizes the highest ideals which it espouses. Boston is recovering from a global pandemic that leaves in its wake unprecedented grief and hardship. 
but also revealed once again a resilient and dedicated people who look after their neighbors and are prepared and equipped to do the hard work of recovery alongside our mayor. We find ourselves at a critical inflection point as a city. In this moment, we have an opportunity and a responsibility to transform the legacy and the future of our city. History has shown us that equity is only realized through intentional leadership, unyielding political will, and profound courage. Mayor Janey has been intentional throughout her life to the pursuit of equity, from education to contracting to enterprise. She will lead with empathy and conviction to ensure no individual or family is left behind as we recover from the crisis we faced, and she will set the stage for a more just and equitable future. She will tap into the intellectual capital, groundbreaking innovations in human infrastructure of our city. She will lead with clear eyes, a full heart, and a steady hand as we begin with reconstruction with the reconstruction of our city that this city and our country ache for. Mayor Janey will have a profound difference. She will make a profound difference for our neighbors and future generations of Bostonians. And now, it is with immense pride and recognition of the full weight of history that I introduce Chief Justice Kimberly Budd to administer the oath of office for mayor. Kimberly Budd was appointed to the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court as an Associate Justice in 2016 and now as the Chief Justice in December 2020. A history maker in her own right. She began her legal career as a law clerk on the Massachusetts Appeals Court. In addition to her work at Harvard as both counsel and director of the Community Values Program, she also worked at Mintz Levin before serving as an assistant U.S. attorney in the U.S. Attorney's Office here in Boston. She was also appointed to the Superior Court in 2009. An exceptionally qualified justice who is now the first black woman to lead the 328-year-old Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court. As she walks the path of a historic first, I could not think of a more poetic moment than sharing the stage with other black women who are historic firsts committed to the upliftment of community. What a remarkable day for the city of Boston. Please welcome to the podium, Chief Justice Budd. Everybody ready? Okay. So when I say I, I'll ask you to repeat your full name and then we'll go from there. I, I, Kim Janey, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and will support the Constitution thereof and will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, I, Kim Janey, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will faithfully and impartially discharge that, and perform, that I will faithfully and impartially, impartially discharge and perform, discharge and perform, all the duties incumbent on me all the duties incumbent on me as mayor of the city of Boston, as mayor of the city of Boston, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability and, and understanding and understanding agreeably to the rules, agreeably to the rules and regulations and of, regulations of the constitution of the constitution and the laws of the Commonwealth 
and the laws of the Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I, I, Kim Janey, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Madam Mayor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let me begin by expressing my deepest appreciation to Chief Justice Kimberly Budd and U.S. Representative Ayanna Presley. Both, yes. Both Chief Justice Budd and Congresswoman Presley are part of a long line of black women in our city who have broken down barriers. Women called to lead, whether activism like Melnia Cass, journalism like Sarah Ann Shaw and Liz Walker, or public service like Doris Bunty, Jean McGuire, and our district attorney, Rachel Rollins. I stand on their shoulders. Chief Justice Budd, it is such an honor to have you administer the oath of office on this historic day. Throughout your career, you have been a pioneer and a steward of justice for all. You have been a role model to me and so many, making history as the first black woman to lead the Supreme Judicial Court. Yes. <laughs> Chief Justice Budd, thank you for your integrity, your excellence, and your service to our Commonwealth. And I owe a debt of gratitude to my sister in service, U.S. Representative Ayanna Presley. You are not only my friend, you are my Congresswoman. I would not be here today, standing as the mayor of the great city of Boston, if it were not for the glass ceilings that you have shattered, not only as the first black woman elected to the Boston City Council, but as the first black woman to represent Massachusetts in Congress. From your years of service on the city council to your historic term in Congress, you have always been our representative. Your advocacy is powerful and unapologetic. Your leadership is fierce and fearless. Congresswoman Presley, thank you for being here. Thank you to my pastor, Billy Roger. To think that my teenage grandsons were born at a time when there had never even been a black woman on our city council. And today, my six-year-old granddaughter, Rosie, and other little girls can see themselves represented in Massachusetts' highest court the halls of Congress, and now in the 55th mayor of Boston. Today is a new day. I stand before you as the first woman and the first black mayor of Boston, the city that I love. I come to this day with life experience that is different from the men who came before me. I was born into a family with deep roots in the South End and six generations in Roxbury, the center of our great city. I come from a long line of proud educators, entrepreneurs, artists, and advocates. I am grateful for my parents who raised me, for my daughter who inspired me, my grandparents who prayed for me, and my siblings who supported me 
my aunties, uncles, and cousins who have always rooted for me. Thank you all. As a girl growing up in Boston, I was nurtured by a family who believed in me and surrounded by good neighbors who knew my name. It was my village. But when I was just 11 years old, school busing rolled into my life. I was forced onto the front lines of the 1970s battle to desegregate Boston public schools. I had rocks and racial slurs thrown at my bus simply for attending school while black. And just yesterday, on my first full day as mayor, I visited my childhood alma mater. I saw students happy to be back in school with their teachers and friends instead of the pain and trauma that I had experienced in middle school. I grew up quickly, becoming a mother in high school. I cleaned bathrooms to afford Smith College to give my daughter everything she needed to succeed. As I juggled it all like so many others, I felt my first call to give back to this city that I love. I volunteered for Mel King's historic grassroots campaign for mayor in Boston. And now, here I am making history of my own. My early experiences with community organizing inspired me as a young single mother to start working on behalf of all children because I understood my daughter's experiences were interconnected with those of every other child across the city. As a part of Massachusetts Advocates for Children, I led efforts to make lasting policy reforms that promote equity and excellence in education for students in BPS working together with parents, students, educators, and administrators, we push to close opportunity and achievement gaps so all children can thrive. That work led me to the Boston City Council in 2018, when I became the first woman to represent District 7, the heart of our city. I continued my fight for economic justice and civil rights and was elected by my peers to serve as city council president. And that, in turn, led me to taking the oath of office today as the 55th mayor of the city of Boston. <laughs> to paraphrase Vice President Kamala Harris, every little girl watching today can see that Boston is a city of possibilities. Today is truly a new day. Sadly, today is a day many Bostonians didn't live to see. Our hearts break for their lives that have been lost during the COVID-19 pandemic, and we grieve with the loved ones left behind. As I assume the responsibilities of Mayor of Boston, I promise to give you bold, courageous leadership, starting with an unrelenting focus to address the impacts of COVID-19. We must do a better job of making vaccines accessible, especially in communities hardest hit. As mayor, I will partner with our federal, state, and local community leaders to support increased testing and vaccinations across our city. I will fight to make this happen. Our recovery must include working together on behalf of our children. That means safely reopening our schools and vaccinating our teachers. That also means investing in summer opportunities. I will partner with the superintendent to rally business community, neighborhood groups, and faith-based organizations to help our children recover academically and emotionally. This issue is personal to me. As a young mother, I fought hard to ensure that my daughter had access to a quality public education. I've worked for over 20 years to increase equity and excellence in education for all students in Boston public schools. Too many of our kids are hurt by an opportunity and achievement gap that limits their true potential. The isolation that many students experienced 
during this pandemic has only made things worse. We must do everything in our power to support our teachers and ensure every student succeeds. Let's be clear. The problems laid bare by the pandemic were here well before COVID-19. The issues of affordable housing, fair wages, public transportation, and climate change are not new. What's different is that these problems now impact even more of us. But I believe, as our pastor has said, these obstacles create an opportunity, an opportunity to come together to heal and build a better and more equitable city. I am humbled and passionate about the possibilities for Boston, the city that I love. Our nation and our city are built on a promise that achieving your dreams is possible, regardless of race, religion, immigration status, income, gender identity, or who you love. But we have so much more work to do to make those dreams real for everyone. And we have to start by calling out the challenges facing our city openly, honestly, and transparently. Today, in the city of Boston, we have an enormous wealth gap. The median net worth for black families is just $8. $8 is not an accident. It is the product of discriminatory policies that we have all inherited. We need to call it out and we need to implement new policies to address it. Unemployment rates for residents of color spiked higher at the start of the pandemic. They continue to trend above other groups. Over the past year, the same communities hardest hit by the public health crisis have experienced the highest rate of housing and food insecurity. I will address these economic disparities with new urgency to reopen Boston's economy with equity. A recent disparity study showed that the enormous inequality in our, in our city contracts. Entrepreneurs of color who deserve a fair shot at doing business with the city are being shut out. This is unacceptable. As mayor, I will take action to solve this problem with new creative solutions to boost city contracts with minority business enterprises and new strategies to hold ourselves accountable. The time for action is now. Dismantling systemic racism also includes reforming how we police our city. As City Council President, I have advocated to address racial profiling and excessive use of force and ban the use of facial recognition software. As Mayor, I will continue to be an advocate and lead the implementation of these reforms. Together, working with our police department, I am determined to bring safety, healing, and justice to all of our neighborhoods. So, while today is a new day, while Boston has come so far, we must also acknowledge that we have so much more work to do. And that work starts now. As we begin my administration, I want to pause and thank my incredible transition committee and staff for all you have done on behalf of the people of Boston. I also want to congratulate the new U.S. Secretary of Labor, Marty Walsh. On a much deserved confirmation. Thank you for seven years of service as mayor of Boston. As a son of Dorchester, your achievement makes us all proud. Working people across our country could not have a more passionate advocate in Washington. And to my dedicated cabinet and colleagues, all the talented and dedicated city employees who helped make this transition a success, you have my eternal thanks. 
Thank you. I look forward to working together with you, and it cannot be said enough that the public servants who wake up every single day to make Boston work, especially during these challenging times, are owed a great debt of gratitude from all of us. As we turn to the future, I am ready to lead our city toward recovery, reopening, and renewal. That means leading the way to a citywide economic recovery that is equitable, especially for the residents and small businesses hardest hit. Today, I am calling on business leaders, nonprofits, and community groups, and those who have felt left out to join us in reopening and renewing every part of our city. To the people of Boston, I say, you have a stake in our city's future. You are the essential part of this recovery. Let's not be afraid to tackle the longer-term challenges that we face together, from racial justice to environmental justice, from affordable housing to our transit system, from our public schools to public safety. We cannot go back. Our only option is to go better. Today is a new day for the city of Boston, and as mayor, I promise to bring my life experiences and my passion for making this city better for everyone, every single day. I promise to bring urgency to this job and strive to make positive change happen in every neighborhood in our city. In my administration, there will always be a place for those who have felt left out of power. And I will also welcome those who have held power to join us in building a better future. I will work each day so that all residents have opportunities to learn, earn, and thrive. I vow to be a mayor for the entire city, for every neighborhood, and for you. If we all work together, there is nothing that Boston can't accomplish. Today is a new day for my Rosie and every little girl and every little boy watching. Let's make it count. Thank you and God bless the city of Boston.